I've been using this Hinu hair growth oil to do my slick backs. I don't feel like it's damaging my hair like gel would, but it holds my slick back like a thick oil. It's so nice. Ever since Henry talked to me about the Indian food he had last week, I've been craving paneer. I think that's what we're gonna get. Let's go. <laughs> It is 11.30 and I'm still in bed. <laughs> Spent all day yesterday cleaning my closet. It felt so good. I refolded everything. I went through all of my clothing and I have so much school. So today we're resetting. Just hopped off a call for my Double Soul collab, which I can finally talk about. I created a sock collection with Double Soul. I wanted to show you what I was talking about. First, these blue striped socks. They go well with everything, with navy, with black, any blue. I wear these the most out of all of them. It's because I'm such a blue Blue girl. I love blue. I love stripes. Next, we have these star ones. I'm just very into the red blue combo. The pattern isn't overwhelming and the colors are gorgeous. I wore this with pinstripe pants and it looked so fun and it added such a pop to my outfit. Next, I have these laced up ones. They look so cool on. Pink and red is another amazing color combination in my opinion. These are a bit more girly, dainty. I'm just such a stripe girl in life and these colors are everything. My wardrobe just goes a bit more pink in the summer. I'll have the link to my collection in my description and you can use my code AVA for 25% off your order. Check them out. Such a fun way to play around with styling. I have office hours for my communications class so right now I need to kind of go over my draft for my essay which I'll talk a bit more about later. That's what my day looks like. Lots of writing. Brought this this sweater back out that I got in Porto. See when you order it. That lunch was the most incredible thing I've had in so long. Suk, if you're watching this. <laughs> She definitely aren't. Thank you. I love dinner parties, lunch parties. I need to do them way more often. Like I love just sharing a meal, chatting. I'm not really into going out as much. Right now I'm going through kind of a slow phase, but I freaking love that. It's so fun. Goop. Just your classic daily serum. Not a day goes by that I don't start my day with hyaluronic or vitamin C serum. There's a serum activator and a serum. Is this powder? Squeeze all the contents into the bottle and then you shake it and you have a serum. That is so cool. And it comes with a little, what's it called? A dropper. Should've known that from my science days. Thank you, Goop. Never had a powder serum experience. I had my office hours. It is one of my favorite classes I've ever taken. She's one of my favorite teachers I've ever taken. Just like her energy. I think she's super interesting, very pleasant, engaging. I love her. Met with her to talk about my second essay, which I'm writing about the AI generated Drake and The Weeknd song, Heart on My Sleeve. It was kind of viral on TikTok for a while. Sounds exactly like Drake and The Weeknd but it's AI generated, which is so freaky. For my new media comms class, where we talk about new forms of media, it's such an interesting course. I'm gonna talk about Paglin. The images that we post online are not just like albums of photos that we peruse for pleasure. There's this machine machine relationship that is forming or that has formed online where our photos are taken in by the algorithm at a pace that we cannot even imagine. Artificial intelligence blows my mind. Images allow artificial intelligence to kind of group people into different groups based on race, class, gender. People have then meta signatures. The article we read for class talks about how as much as it may be diverse, it's also very constraining. It's diverse until it comes time to hand out insurance necessarily in AI. There's issues of prejudice and bias. Paglin talks about how we feed so many images to these sites that then transform those images into data training sets that then enhance machines' abilities to read and decortique images, which completely transforms our relationship with visual culture. I'm arguing that in the case of the AI-generated song, that's happening with sonic culture. Necessarily, in order to be able to make this song, AI has 
analyze thousands of bits and pieces from Drake and the Weeknd songs in order to be able to recreate almost to a T the sound, the beat, all these things of these artists. I would like to talk about how Paglin's point about images and all these meta signatures that are being formed through the images that we put online. The same thing is happening with sonic culture. We just do not have the same relationship to sound and music as we once did. Ghostwriter, the person who created this song through AI, put the song in to be considered for the Grammys. So there's obviously some ill intent. And then that brings me to the other part of my essay. I want to talk about fake news. Fake news being something that is intentionally deceiving. We talked about Andreevic and this idea of people wanting to believe in something because it prescribes to their existing beliefs. When that song came out, people weren't necessarily discouraged from listening to it because they knew that it was not real. I think there was maybe even the opposite effect where people actually liked it more. It's like excitement about enjoying a song that you know isn't real real my comms class from last semester we talked about sarah jackson gifts of black people being used by white people to express how they're feeling and stuff and how that is exploiting the emotional labor of the people whose likenesses are taken and it is a form of digital blackface sarah jackson argues and i think this situation is kind of similar in the sense that it's using drake's and the weekend's likenesses to promote a song that isn't real in that way it's a kind of blackface using their voices to promote a song try to get into the grammys just icky you have to think about the whole other aspect of being hip-hop rap which is historically a genre that was created by black people so there's that whole aspect to that i think could be really interesting to talk about right now it's a lot of ideas that i need to sit down and make a proper outline that makes sense i'm super excited to write about this my film essay the first one did not go as well as i would have liked my big issue is i have a lot of ideas about a scene and i try to all make them fit into a thesis but that doesn't always work just because i notice something in a scene that i think is cool doesn't mean that it's relevant to my argument and i think that's hard for me to do is stay on the point stay focused on my argument for the second teen essay i'm gonna write about mean girls which i'm so excited about i'm gonna do the scene where katie goes to the halloween party dresses as an ex-wife and sees regina talk to aaron and in her head she's like oh my god she's talking to aaron for me and then we actually see that regina's talking shit about katie and calling her all these names and making it seem like she's some creepo obsessive girl the voiceover is katie completely clueless saying she's such a good and then regina and aaron kiss the camera pans and katie's like slut i want to talk about that scene and its relationship to Driscoll's article where she talks about a sequence of films, Heathers, Clueless, Mean Girls, all being self-reflexive texts, meaning that they all are very aware of the cliches of teen films. We have Katie who grew up in Africa who has no idea what high school really is and how it works and her voiceover reflects that cluelessness and innocence and she is taught by people in the film the different rules of teenagehood and how the cafeteria is organized, all these things. And so the film is very aware of the cliches of the genre but they also engage in those same elements so that's how they are self-reflexive and using katie who comes from africa has never been socialized we have this fresh perspective on the world of high school girl world and all this stuff it allows for some criticism and we talked about how this defamiliarizes the teen film genre and just like the world of teenagehood i think that this scene is perfect to dive into that argument of driscoll's we know based on the teen film genre that regina is a mean girl and that she will probably not be supportive of Katie wanting to date her ex. We know where this scene is going before it happens but we have this voiceover from this clueless person who does defamiliarize that for us and make us think oh wait maybe this actually isn't normal behavior. Let's get to work. to oh god barely pas de for a dinner with Ellis Brooklyn. I look crazy, sorry. This restaurant has been on my radar. And then I'm gonna head to Pippa's Champagne birthday party. A fun night ahead, good food, good company, and a nice party to end it off. Was. <laughs> and when I remembered that Taylor Swift 
other type of song, got a key, this is the same number. <laughs> and but my champagne birthday fell on a Friday. I knew this was day had to be special. So I don't have a lot of things going for me right now. A couple of weeks ago, I did the impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I failed an art history mentor. <laughs> Back with his favorite pizza. 